Chapter 8 Alexa Brenner We really should get back. His persistently nagging voice negates my own selfish thoughts. Opening one eye stubbornly retains the sleepy peacefulness I cling to. I could easily just nod off again. The sun soaks my skin, warming me. Raylene's twinkling laugher is off in the distance. Crystal's variety of growls and chirps break up the laughter now and then. I don't want to. While true, much of what I mean is left unsaid. The guilt of the lies and the trepidation of returning without the gift leave me wishing to never return. I close my eye and resume sunbathing on the lounge chair. Some time passes. I expect him to speak again, but he doesn't. I open both of my eyes. They adjust to the light slowly. Raylene and Crystal are still playing in the grass. Daniel is nowhere to be seen. I leave to go find him. Raylene should be safe enough in the yard for the couple minutes it should take to find Daniel. Inside the house, my eyes adjust to the darker insides. I quickly locate Daniel when there is a dull banging noise and a grunt of exertion at the front door. Two duffel bags are on the ground and one more slung over his shoulder. He has to be moving them out to the SUV. The back door is open. What are you doing? Packing up. He says. Do we have to? An added playful whine and pout complete the words, but it is lost on him when he doesn't look at my face. Yes. It's safer in Banff. Go get Raylene. We'll be ready to leave right away. Daniel starts to leave the house, trying to end the conversation. I don't know about that. With Darius lurking around it might be safer to stay away from Banff. On a second thought, it may be more dangerous to avoid going back. Darius is the type who would search the ends of the earth for me. A trait I once found endearing is now a frightening sign of how far he'd go to keep me. We could stick around here for a little while longer. I think out loud while following him as far as the front step. It might not hurt to spend a few more hours here. It's peaceful, quiet, and a pleasant touch of privacy. He turns around. We've already wasted half the day. They're going to get worried that something happened to us. What if they decide to send a search party after us? Would you be happy knowing that someone might get injured because we decided to laze about all afternoon too? Fine. Resigning to his determination to leave, I huff, then turn around to get Raylene. Footsteps run heavy behind me. Arms scoop me in and lift me up. I panic and kick to get loose. Leaving without a kiss? Daniel asks. How can I kiss you like this? I return. All panic has left me. Arms I thought to be Darius are not. They belong to my boyfriend. He lets my feet touch the ground. Spinning around, I greet his eager lips with my own for a brief encounter. Perhaps all the panic hasn't left me. I itch to break free and check on Raylene. Pushing back on him, we part ways as I break the grasp he has on me. I leave him and go through the house to the patio doors. Following her laughter brings me to her exact position, right about where I had left her. Raylene and Crystal chase and roughhouse with each other. Crystal pounces on Raylene, pushing her to the ground by her back. The little girl rolls over, knocking the griffin off. Raylene tackle hugs Crystal to the ground. I watch in adoration. An arm curls up around my shoulder. Time to go. Daniel announces to all present. Raylene and Crystal continue wrestling, likely not hearing him talk. Raylene we're leaving now. He shouts at her. Raylene immediately stops. Crystal rolls over her, not ready for the sudden stop. Raylene pops herself up. Come on Crystal. She says, patting her leg for the animal's attention. Daniel releases my shoulders to take my hand. Raylene crosses by us to race to the SUV with Crystal. It's a straight path through the house to get to the front door. Forlornly, I burn this house and its memories into my mind. We were happy, played board games, children's games, loved and laughed. We were like a carefree little family. But with a crashing realization, it is over, and we have to return. There will be a new start when we arrive. Darius will be waiting, and I will have to go with him. I can only hope to delay this along the way. A thought comes to me. I'll drive. If I drive, I can get us lost. Not enough to prevent us from getting there at all, just more like taking a scenic route to get back. Are you sure? He asks in courtesy as he holds out the keys for me to take. I take hold of the keys and then kiss him gently. Yeah, I feel like driving. We arrive at the SUV. A moment of forgetfulness has me opening the passenger door. 
I duck around the front when I realize what I did. Act like I did it on purpose to save face on the embarrassment. Inside the vehicle, I started up. Checking on everyone's status, I find all are inside and the doors are shut, seatbelts are on all the people. It's good enough for me. Putting the SUV into drive, I set us off. Drive out of the neighborhood and out towards the city exit. At the last set of lights, a convoy of vehicles blocks off the exit. They weren't there yesterday. This is the way we came back into the city, and none of these vehicles were here. I stop with a little confusion. Now, I guess we find another way out of town. Two burly men with high powered guns come out from one of the cars. Drive, 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 drive. His voice gets louder and quicker, more urgent. Hurling the steering wheel to one side and stomping on the gas screeches the tires. It's not until I look back in the rear view mirror that I see why Daniel continues to freak out in the seat next to me. A couple of the vehicles blocking the way out are now following us. There's more than one way to get out of this town. Just a little past the high school, I turn to the right. The straightaway allows my speed to shoot up fast. The vehicles are still tailing us. I know this road ends but to get out of town means following the same highway that leads us towards the farm and the opposite way of Banff. This wasn't how I wanted to delay things, but I'll take it as long as no one is injured in any way. From time to time I look back. The people are catching up. Driving faster and faster, until they are practically on my bumper. The pool passes on my right. I need to slow down to make the upcoming turn, but I can't let these people catch us. Who knows their intentions? They set up a roadblock at one of the main ways out of town, and started chasing us. Next I expect gunfire and vehicle ramming, like what you see in the movies. At the last moment I slam the brakes and turn. Crunching metal and a jolt from the backside throw off my aim a little. The SUV hops up onto the curb, narrowly missing the light post. I hit the gas until all wheels are up on the side of the road. Veering back to the road, we take off fast. Once control on the SUV is in hand, I look up to the mirror. People from the second vehicle are rushing out to the first. Terrifying and exhilarating as the whole chase was, I am glad they stopped following us. Adrenaline keeps my fingers and legs twitching. My speed remains naturally high with my foot-like lead. The familiar road is the same one we would take to get back to the farms. Turn right down that road. His words bring me back to reality. What? I ask dumbly. Turn right. Down that road. Daniel instructs. He points down the road he means. I slow down and take the turn he wants me to. Shoulder checking on Raylene in the back seat, I see her pulled up into a ball, clutching onto Crystal. Are you okay? I don't expect an answer back. It's okay. They stopped following us. I know it was a bit scary, but we're fine now. What was that? Who the hell were they? Do we have to worry about thugs now? They had to be human. They looked human. I don't know. I answer for all of his questions and statements. Should we have tried to talk to them? Daniel asks. I don't know, but probably not. They didn't have to chase us, but they did. They might have robbed us or worse. I offer. They wouldn't have good intentions with actions like those. Right. He answers. We drive in silences a ways before he gives instructions again. Turn right up there. It'll connect to the QE too. We fall silent. I pass glances to each of my travel companions through the journey. Raylene eventually slowly uncurls and falls asleep. Crystal weaves through her legs. Daniel stares out the window to only pipe up to tell me where to go. His instructions create a barrier between my plan and putting it to reality, stopping me from losing our way and delaying our arrival. The bright day turns to a red dusk as we drive into town. We are met with the oddest of sights as we near the big field not far into the city. Mounds of black are sprinkled in the field. One bonfire burns near the center. What are they burning? I ask out loud, mostly to myself. Pull over. Daniel quietly says. I just stop the vehicle instead. Are they our people? The thought hasn't occurred to me that we might not know them. What if Darius sent them? The question is nixed just a moment later. Long golden blonde hair atop a shorter girl's head, held within a ponytail, is undeniable in her identity. There's Jaden. With Raylene still asleep, I leave the vehicle.
Left and right, I don't see a way to get through the fence, so I must go over. Putting my hands on the metal pole at the top, and a foot into the chain link fence, I kick up. The fence piece wobbles unnervingly. Carefully and quickly, I hoist myself up enough to kick my leg over. Why are you climbing the fence? Daniel asks. I expect him to be on the side I had come from, and yet he's on the side I'm headed to. To get into the field. I say. There's an open gate right there. He points down about 10 feet. Now that I am on this side, I can see the opened gate clearly. Well, I didn't see that. I admit. Pulling my other leg over, Daniel grabs a hold of my waist. He supports my weight, so I let go and let him bring me to the ground. Thanks. I peck his lips to reiterate the sentiment. Silly girl. He endears. You always have to do things the hard way, don't you? I brush off the tees to walk towards the events. Looking over to where Jaden was, I call her name, Jaden, loud enough for her to hear. She turns around and looks. When she spots us by the fence, she walks to a person nearby. Taller than her, with black hair up in a bun, it must be Leah. When she turns around to look over at us, I confirm suspicions. At least two people made it back from our trip. I don't see the other three yet. Jaden walks over. She has a neutral look, as opposed to her natural smile. Hi. Ah. Uh. She looks over at the fire. What's going on? I ask, impatient for the answer. Jaden looks back at me and bites her lip in the corner, with an eye tooth. They were attacked while we were gone. Brad and his group of extremists started the attack because they said a supernatural being attacked them. Turns out that Darius initiated an attack while we were gone. Every human here died with no exceptions. They killed some of the supernatural beings here too, those who didn't want to join them again. And whoever hid well enough or weren't here got to live. My heart is struck and my body quakes. Who? Only the one word makes it through my lips. Who died? Who is still alive? Why did Darius attack them? Is this a punishment for me? Who is still alive? Kelly and Miles are alive. It brings me some relief to hear those two names, but when she stops there it does nothing to relieve my discomfort. I don't know who else you would want to know about. What about anyone else from our original group? Daniel asks. Jaden shakes her head. No one else that stayed behind is alive. Nikki, Sean and Stephanie haven't returned yet. Lucas and Callie are? Daniel trails off in his question. He already has an answer from her previous statement, but he double checks anyway. Dead. She says. I'm sorry. Thanks. There is an awkward pause. I'm sorry too. Everyone has lost a lot of people they cared about. My eyes do all they can to advert her gaze. Where's Raylene? Sleeping in the SUV. Daniel answers when I can't. Cam? My voice squeals. Jaden scrunches her eyebrows. She may not have known him. The boy who was teaching Raylene magic? I clarify in hopes she knows. No, sorry. I haven't seen him. He's either dead or went with Darius. It takes all I can muster to not break down. My breathing quickens, and I feel the beginnings of a panic attack. Daniel notices and pulls me into a hug. The up and down movement of his hand rubbing my back doesn't do anything to calm me down. Darius did this. All these people are dead because Darius killed them. He told me to leave. He got me to leave so he could attack them all. He said I'd be convinced to join him when I... The words returned to me. He said that I had to go to the farm and see what he left me. That when I returned, I would be convinced to join him. He did it. The gift was death at the farm and here. Darius killed all of these people to get me back. He's gone insane. How could he possibly think I would like that, and be okay with it? He's trying to scare me into submission, and part of me thinks it's working. Darius killed everyone around me, to convince me to return to him. It's a deafening message. I need a drink. I say. I'll go get you water? Daniel releases me from his chest and stars off towards the SUV. Alcohol. I mean a drink of alcohol. I clarify. Water just won't clench this thirst of a different variety. I need to drown the explosion of feelings. Oh. I'll go find you some. He offers. No thanks. I can find it myself. That Irish pub is right over there. I remember. I'll come with you. 
Jaden offers. I could use a drink after the day I've had. Daniel, someone should watch Raylene. She shouldn't be alone for so long. We can walk to the pub just fine. He hesitates while crossing looks with Jaden. Sure. I'll watch her. Daniel says. He kisses my forehead. Jaden and I walk in silence to the pub. I guide us by walking just slightly ahead of her. She pulls open the door to hold it for me. I walk through it first. Jaden goes straight to behind the counter and into the back room. Moments later she comes back with a bottle of McGuinness cherry whiskey. Did I cause this? I ask. Cause what? She asks in confusion. Did I cause all those people to die? No. Her answer is too quick and insincere. Jaden please. I need you to tell me the truth. You of all people can tell me the truth. I need her to tell me the truth before my feelings crush me. The truth from someone else will set me free from my mind. You didn't stick a sword in them or rip out their throats but yes, in a way, all of this is partially your fault. Ask and you shall receive. Jaden doesn't hold back on the punches. Did you know he was going to attack? Of course not. So you're wanting to leave real quick from here didn't have anything to do with Darius warning you? Jaden accuses me. No I mean? I should have seen it coming. In hindsight I should have told someone he was there. I should have told them what happened, the exchange between us. It could have made all the difference. He came to me. I didn't see him since the hotel. He didn't tell me he was going to attack. He told me to go to the farm because he left me a gift there. We left soon after. That gift was the massacre you never saw. I'm guessing, because you were off looking for a gift, not crystal like you said. I nod to her assumption. He left you a bloody note inside the house. Said it was for you. Darius killed everyone there for you, then came here to get you to go see that, then while you were gone and safe, he killed everyone here. Once again a clear message that it was done just for you. I didn't know. I yell, as if that would convince her that I'm telling the truth. I'm not saying otherwise. Jaden holds up both her hands. One hand is palm out, and the other one clutches the bottle. You don't need to be defensive, and you don't need to blame yourself. You didn't know what he was going to do, fine. I didn't know either. I was just stating the events. Darius is after you, and he's proving that he will kill everyone you know in order to get to you. She pauses to reflect and take a gulp of the alcohol. He's coming back for you, isn't he? Yes. He said he would. Quick as a flash, she throws another question at me. Do you still want to be with him? Her question was once a hard one to answer. A couple days ago, my answer might have been a little different. But now I can confidently answer, no. Then you're our best chance at killing him. Jaden's leap in the conversation throws me off. What? If you don't want him to keep killing everyone you know, including Raylene, then he needs to die. Darius is clearly obsessed with you. He's not going to think logically. You can get close enough to him to end it all. I can't stake him. I'm not strong enough to drive in a wooden stake. I say the first excuse to come to mind. It's one thing to not be in love with him anymore, and another to kill him. It's not something I think I could do. It doesn't have to be a wooden stake. I roll my eyes. So I've heard. It doesn't have to be as hard as going through the sternum to the heart either. You could go for the throat. Nice and soft with a sharp pointy knife. Jaden doesn't get it. I don't think I could kill him. Or distract him. I'll kill him so you don't have to. She offers a plan B. How? I want details. How am I supposed to distract him enough for Jaden to kill him? How will she kill him? I'll figure that out depending on the events that happen. Can't plan for something when you don't know what'll happen. Distracting Darius requires me to be close to him, dangerously close to him. You'll protect Raylene, right? If something happens to me. Yes. Thank you. She takes another swig. Oh, and don't tell anyone about you meeting Darius. We don't need another Taylor incident. Jaden warns. The vampires are already looking to feed on us. Humans are a scarcity around here. Don't give anyone a reason why they should just hand you over as food. But everyone knows about the farm and about what happened here. They'll piece it together. If she can piece it together, then someone else is likely to come to the same conclusion. 
as far as they're concerned, anyone could have killed the farm people. Leah and I are the only ones who saw the note, and she's keeping her mouth shut about it. No one's expressly said this was your fault. As far as they know, Darius came back for revenge. We'll try to keep it that way. Okay, thank you. Not fussy about the type of alcohol at this point, I grab the first bottle I see. It's a bottle of vodka, from a company I've never heard. I'm more concerned about getting the alcohol pumping through my system as fast as possible. This wasn't the type of conversation I was hoping for when I initially asked my question. I was looking for niceties. The optimistic version of the truth. Someone to hold my hand and tell me everything is going to be okay because I had nothing to do with anything. I should have expected Jaden wouldn't do that. Jaden has fed me the undeniable truth, like I should have expected her to after asking for it. She tried to play nice and I went and asked for the truth. Ultimately, it wasn't what I was looking for. It didn't make me feel better about everything, it created a numb space where the turmoil cancelled out. Her with her cherry whiskey and I with my vodka returned to the SUV. Daniel has turned on the inside lights in the front of the vehicle. I'm going to go back and see Leah. She points over to the fire. I just let her go without a word. The door opens easily. Daniel jumps a little at my entrance. Better? I hop inside and close the color behind me. Much. I open the cap and take a couple swigs. It burns. The flavor like nail polish, bottom shelf vodka. Would you like some? Nah. He looks behind me. Where'd Jaden go? Back to Leah. I say. Back to the fire. Him, most of them left. What? I look over to the fire and the dark piles. There aren't as many people left as there was when we had first arrived. Most of them left? I guess they were done. A few stuck behind to watch over the last of the fire, but I guess the rest left to go back to the houses. I guess we'll head back too. He starts up the vehicle and drives us forward. I don't want to sleep. Don't think I could. Another couple gulps of the vodka go down smooth. We don't have to go to sleep. There's plenty we could do after we put Raylene to bed. Years of experience tell me otherwise. She's a light sleeper and once she's up, she's up for a while. You know she's hard to move after she falls asleep. By this point she'll wake up when we move her and I don't think she'd fall back to sleep. You know that means she'll be super cranky tomorrow. So we leave her in the SUV. He states a solution too simply. We can't just leave her in the SUV all night. I argue. I didn't mean that. I meant we could stick close by while we're up, then either take our chances, or one of us could lean back a front seat to take a nap. Now the idea makes sense. Okay, yeah? We drive down the roads to pull in through the alleyway. There's a campfire in the back of the vampire's house. We're waved down before we can go further by a familiar face alit by the headlights. Miles gestures for us to pull over. Our SUV stops near him. Daniel rolls down the window. What? Miles walks up to his window and rests his hands where the window once was. Hey. Glad you're okay. From the sounds of it, we should be saying that to you. Daniel commiserates. It was chaotic and tragic. Miles stops at that. We don't need specific details to know that what did happen was completely horrible. He might not want to talk about it. So were you just waiting to get ran over, or? Daniel jests to lighten the mood. Everyone's sleeping at this house. No dead bodies or remnants of anyone in there. Can't guarantee the same about any of the other houses. Miles informs us of the change. I look to the house. The vamp house may not be the safest place right now. Darius may have relations with any of the demons. He could have left them behind to watch me. Jaden already warned me about the vampires wanting us for our blood. I know they can't be trusted. Why are we sleeping in a house full of them? Good to know. I guess we'll stop here then. We weren't looking to sleep though. Alexa's got alcohol and no one's tired. Except Raylene, but she's already sleeping in the back and we don't want to disturb her. Kelly's two trucks up. Miles looks over to where he means. We'll pull up there so we can keep an eye on Raylene. Daniel waits until Miles takes just one step back before taking his foot off the brake. He lets the SUV coast forward until we parallel the truck. There isn't much room on either side of our SUV. 
We park and exit, me with one last glance at the sleeping girl in the back. Raylene looks peaceful. Crystal coos in a sort of acknowledgement in our departure. How'd you beat us back? Daniel yells, astonished. I hold back a shout to keep it down. When I see him directing the question to Jaden, the same question runs through my mind. It's only a block and a half, and Leah helped me run back. She answers. Handing my bottle to Daniel for safekeeping, I climb up into the back of the truck where three of them are awaiting us. Kelly, Leah and Jaden are seated on pillows. Jaden is wrapped almost entirely in a blanket, while Leah has one covering her legs. I pull an unused blanket around me like a towel, and then sit down. The nights are still cold but not enough to worry about frost. Daniel hands me the bottle of vodka after he's up inside the truck, forgotten in my bid to settle down. Twisting the cap, I take a couple gulps. Kelly recounts the story of how she and Miles escaped Darius and the others. She tells the story as an epic telling, but it could have easily been summed up as a tale of running, killing three people, and hiding in a basement for a few hours. Done her story and her drink, Miles gets up to go to the corner of the open tailgate with the box of coolers. He takes the whole box. One bottle is handed out to each person. I take mine and open up the top with my palm. Taking a drink of the liquid inside. It's sweeter than my vodka, too sweet with the contrast but that will ebb. It's a strawberry daiquiri, of course it's sweet. This drink does taste better. Is she sleeping? The words bring my attention to the person speaking them, Miles. For just a moment, I wonder if they are talking about Raylene. Jaden is leaned back and hunched over. Her head has fallen over to the side, at an uncomfortable looking angle. Leah says she hasn't slept much. Should we wake her to go inside? I ask. Let her sleep. She's not bothering anyone, and I don't feel like having to go inside yet. Leah counters. Why would she have to go inside? The question has no chance of being asked by me, Daniel beats me to it. She's a big girl. She's can go to bed by herself. Suddenly it dawns on me, the vampires. The same reason I worry about sleeping in that house. Jaden was the very person who warned me about it. Oh yeah, one of only three humans in a town full of vampires who haven't fed properly in months, will be completely fine in a house of vampires all by herself. Leah's sarcasm is palpable. We can take bets on how long before one decides to take a bite out of her. Oh wait, Leah already has. Kelly takes a jab at her. I was about to rage, and she offered to take the edge off. Tension builds between Kelly and Leah. The violent image that I had created morphs to one more like the memory of what happened in the bathroom at the school. What do we do now? I ask, hoping to cut the tension and eventual fight. Drink and party until we fall asleep. Kelly switches gears so quickly I'm not certain she is serious. I roll my eyes. I meant later. After the partying and sleeping off the hangover. We leave. We can't stay here. Darius has made it obvious that he's going to keep coming back here. I'm relieved Daniel is on the same page. We need to leave. Run far away from here. Somewhere Darius can't find us. Where? Is any place really safe? Kelly questions. I've got the answer for you. Nowhere is safe. What if we cross the border? Miles suggests. What the hell would that do? Daniel outbursts from his confusion and frustration. Darius won't chase us. He has responsibility here. His territory is in Alberta. He'd be killed if he crossed territories without permission or warning to the other leader. Miles explains. Knowing Darius as I do, I don't think something so simple will stop him. He doesn't like following rules when they don't suit him. If he wants to get to me, Darius isn't going to let an imaginary line tell him he can't. Yeah okay, until he gets permission. Then what? Daniel asks. It'll buy us some time. And he might not get permission. It's not like he's well-liked among the other leaders. Miles says. So we're banking on Julius not giving him permission. And what if he decides that he doesn't care what Julius says? Darius will come straight after us. Kelly's line of thinking aligns with my own. Or he could come back here and kill us tonight, maybe tomorrow. Miles reminds me of the urgency in leaving. Darius said he'd be back. He might already be here, waiting for me. We can't just sit here and wait for him to kill us. I say we go to BC now, tonight. 
As soon as we can get ready. Why do we have to go to BC? Can't we just go somewhere else that's not over the mountains? Darius is bad, but he's more of an annoyance. Julius is just cruel. Leah joins in. Nothing says that we'll even run into this Julius guy. It's a big province, a big territory. Right now we are trying to get away from the guy who seems to just love hacking up our friends. Daniel pushes. He's on board with the idea now. He's targeting us for a reason. Kelly glares straight at me. I look away, red in the cheeks, and hope no one else notices. Daniel puts a hand on my knee in support. We should just do it. We've got everyone here. Not everyone. Nikki, Sean and Stephanie aren't back yet. Leah reminds us. We can't wait for them for forever. We don't even know if they're coming back. Daniel argues. Jaden pissed off Nikki, so I wouldn't doubt if they decide to stay away. Can we just give them some time to get back here first? Leah asks. What would you have done if we decided to pack up the minute we returned? We'll give them till morning, but we have to leave. Daniel decides for everyone. Jaden's not going to like that. Leah says. Jaden's sleeping. She doesn't get a vote. What would she do anyway, Leah? Stay here by herself, hoping for her sister's return? A sister, mind you, that hates her guts right now. Daniel persists in pushing us to leave as soon as possible. He is right, they might not return. Those three are all they had, if you take Jaden out of the equation. Are we to risk our lives because of a small possibility that they might make it back here before Darius does? It's better for everyone if we leave immediately. I echo. That open to everyone? The new voice surprises me. D'Angelo makes himself known along with five other people. Of course. Everyone is welcome to join. Miles says. Good, because we were just discussing the same thing. No one wants to stay here. There's no point anymore. D'Angelo speaks for his small group. Then, I guess you should go get ready. Everyone should. When we're packed up, we leave. Daniel tells everyone as a collective. You said we'd wait until morning. Leah jumps on his words quickly. Use your senses, I know you've got them. I'm sure even the humans have noticed by now. Kelly must notice my look of confusion. They're back. Discussion's over. I look around but don't see them. I'll take her word on it. Most people leave to pack up by the time the two of them make their way over to us. Daniel, Jaden and I remain behind as the others gather. Our belongings and supplies are still in the SUV from our journey. We don't need anything else. What took you so long? Daniel goads. Gas problems? Got a flat tire. Everything that could go wrong with our vehicle went wrong. Sean answers with an amused smile. Where's Stephanie? I ask when I notice she's missing. Dead. Nikki seethes. She watches Jaden sleep with a drop-dead glare. I'm so sorry. I say, knowing it won't make a difference in what she's feeling. What happened? I lightly elbow him and his lack of tact. Now isn't the right time to question them on it. For all we know they were attacked on the way into town, and she died just minutes ago. We were attacked last night. She was shot. Sean explains. My mind make an assumption in one word, humans. If she was shot the perpetrators were likely human, right? I'm sorry. I apologize both for their loss and for Daniel bringing up the painful memories. It's fine. Nikki dismisses my condolences. What was this I heard about BC? We're going to BC to try to get away from Darius. He attacked everyone while we were gone. I explain it all. I don't know how much they know. Or we could stay and fight. Nikki finally looks over to us from Jaden. Nothing good comes from leaving. Nothing good is going to happen if we stay. Darius is just going to come back and attack again. Daniel argues. So we fight and kill the bastard. The anger snarls her voice. With all the loss she's experienced in the last day, I'm amazed she hasn't broken down to a shell by this point. She, out of the rest of us, had made many good friends from the vast majority of the people here. A few of them I will miss. General consensus says to leave. We'll leave with or without you. Daniel shrugs. What did Jaden say? She asks. She doesn't get a vote. She's sleeping. Daniel reiterates from earlier. So wake her up. She scoffs. 
Everyone's just going to go? Yeah. So are you coming with us or not? Daniel forces her to make a decision. Doesn't look like I get much of a choice. No point in staying if I'm the only one. Nikki spots the remaining bottle in the box of coolers. Taking one for herself, she pops the top and chugs down the entire bottle. She removes two more bottles from the box and then walks the couple steps back over to Sean. You're driving. She holds up the keys to their SUV for Sean. When he takes them, she walks off to where she had come from.